Hey everyone and welcome to Squiddly Beats. This is my second channel with faster, more improvised videos. And this specific video, I promised you about one and a half year ago. It's a quick tip tutorial about how to paint the axe of Zion and Dea, which is a figure from the first Kickstarter I did. And it's been heavy on my shoulders uh, that I haven't finished a tip video for this figure, but it's finally here. So it is a quick painting tip tutorial on how to paint a moody non-metallic metal axe that just looks amazing. Now let's get started. So we're gonna start painting the axe and we're going to use this as a reference this is the one that are now lots of painted for the kickstarter and what we want to do with the light of the axe is to have the light kind of coming across from the top side here to the bottom side of the other side so we have the main sort of light source traveling across so we have the top here a little bit darker and the bottom here a little bit darker so i think we're just going to start with that part so for the first layer, as we got a black base and we kind of want to keep this one dark, I'm going to begin with just mixing a bit of the dark sea blue with black as our first layer. That way we get smooth transitions between every single one of these layers. And once we've done that, I'm going to add the second layer of paint. Uh, it's going to be a dark sea blue with maybe, I would say, 20% of the Warpstone Glow mixed in. And we're going to add that to a slightly smaller surface than we did before and focus mainly on the top part on this side here and then the bottom of the right side. And with that, I leave about 10-20% of the first layer. And every time I go into a brighter color or I have more of a different color, I do it on a slightly smaller surface and that's what's gonna create the effect and the feeling of it having a smooth transition because we do these ingredients. And with the brush I do it all the time in sideways strokes. It almost gives the axe a sort of brushed steel look to the edges and makes it feel sharper than it actually is painted, but it really does work. And once I've done a layer of dark sea blue with just a little bit of green, I'm adding in a bit more of the green and going on a smaller surface. So it's like 50-50 mix. And I do this again on a slightly smaller surface. With this 50-50 mix of Warpstone Glow and dark sea blue added, I'm going to mix in a little bit of the sunny skin tone. This adds a little bit more of a brightness to it and it also keeps the saturation in it. So we're not yet making it gray, it's still got a lot of color in it. To me this is a perfect way of making like a fantasy steel because we still got the mood of like a darker evening, but it's still grayish, but with color. I don't know how to say it, but it definitely works and you're gonna see it when we finish painting this. Another point that I again want to remind you guys is that Usually on metallics, the light travels down, so you have the brightest point on the most bottom one. So instead of making edge highlight on the top parts of each one of these runes, I'm making it on the bottom part of the runes. And you're not gonna want to go too bright with these colors, because we want the edge highlights to really, really make things pop. And with that, we're going to do a mix with even more of the sunny skin tone. It's gonna to be like 80% sunny skin tone, and just do dots on the edges, and do the sharp scratches. And when you do the scratches, I like to use an even smaller tipped brush because that gives me these like micro fine scratches with the tip of the tinier brush. So that's my recommendation for the next step. The natural way of painting is not to do a step by step, but is to continually change things. So for every layer that I did, you saw me kind of go back and forth and make stuff wider and glaze in between them. And the last step to this is, I'm just going to add a few, few dots of ivory 50-50 mixed with sunny skin tone. These things are just going to be added to a few, few select areas where we want the light to reflect even more. But because again, we want to have like a darker mood on this one, I don't want to add a lot of that. It's just gonna be fine like micro dots. So remember to keep that to a tinier area.
So guys, I hope you at least learned something from this video. If you want to learn how to paint a pretty cool orc skin, I've made quite a few tutorials. But there is one in particular that I think you should check out. It's linked up there and I'll put it in the video description as well. Because that one is actually really good for how to speed up your painting process and still get box art quality on your bigger miniatures and busts. So go check that one out. And now it's time for a grand reveal.